It's very important that you nail the pieces together in the order that is stated on your instruction sheet on this on step eight. Assemble the front and the non-swinging side first. So locate your front piece and the piece that will be the non-swinging side. The non-swinging side will have a hole drilled near the bottom to attach to the floor. This person drilled a hole too far to the side. The front, make sure you have the outside. Then you'll place the non-swinging side in a vise. Next, take your front and rest it across the edge of the side piece. And it's also important to make sure that the front is a quarter of an inch taller than the side, like this. Once you have it in the right place, you can rest, rest it there, hold it in place with one hand, and stack up your other pieces underneath it. Here are the nails you'll need. They're one and a half inch 4D hot galvanized box nails. They might be in a Hershey can like this, over, over at the tool station. So go ahead and look and bring some nails over to your bench. And you can go ahead and tap, a, tap two nails in, one towards the top and one towards the bottom of the front. And be careful when you nail, nail nice and straight. The hammer should move straight up and down. You only need two nails there. When you're done nailing those two, you should have a quarter of an inch height difference between the front and the side. The front should be a quarter of an inch taller than the side. Next, follow the order. The next piece is the floor. Carefully balance the floor underneath the front piece, lining it up with the nail hole you drilled earlier. That hole right there will take a nail that will attach the floor. So balance it together, line it up, and hold, hold, hold it together with one hand while you stick in a nail with the other hand and tap the nail down. Then turn it over so that the side faces up towards you and balance the floor underneath. You can put an extra piece of wood underneath the floor so that it's level and tap the nail home. Now you're only going to nail the side into the floor on the non-swinging side. Do not nail the swinging side. We need to keep that one open. Next we attach the back. Turn your house upside down, face down, and rest the back across, lining up the nail holes that you drilled earlier. If you find that your nail holes are in the wrong place, we can go ahead and make some new, some, some new ones. Hold in place with one hand and tap the nails in with the other. That up later. Remember that you do need to nail the back onto the non-swinging side, but don't nail the back onto the swinging side. Only at the top of the swinging side, not the bottom. All right. Now we have, what, four out of six sides? Yep. What's next, man? Next, attach the roof. Balance your house on the edge of a workbench so that the long back extends and hangs out and so your house can sit flat on the bench. Line up the back nail holes with the back and line up the nail holes you nailed for the front with the front right here. You got to really make sure that those holes are lined up with the center of the front piece below it because that nail is going to go right into the center of the front piece. So, look to the side of the house, move your eyes down along the side and make sure that the nail holes are lined up.
Do the same thing with the nail holes in the back. Move, move your eyes down to the side of the house and make sure that it is lined up, that the nail holes are lined up correctly. And if you followed the instructions and did it correctly, you should have a nice even air vent along the top of both sides. Last but not least is the swinging side. The last side is like a swinging door. So we're only going to use nails on the top part. Now this person drilled a hole in the back along the bottom of the swinging side. You do, you do not want to put a nail here. Do not put a nail there because if you do, then the door will not swing open. So we'll just ignore that hole and we'll put nails in the top two holes here and there. Now it's very important that these two nails are lined up in a straight line with one another. If they are not directly across from one another, the door will not open very far. This side too will also have a nice even quarter of an inch air vent at the top. So make sure that the swinging side is shorter than the front and the back. See the height difference? Go ahead and hold it with one hand. Put your nail in and tap the nail in gent gently but firmly. Now this very last nail is called the holder nail. With that, we're only going to tap it in about halfway and then we'll stop and pull that nail out again. Tap it in halfway, pull, pull the nail out, and then we'll stick the nail back in again by hand. Okay, with varnishing, I want you to be very careful. Take, take a look at the varnish kit here. The ball. Keep the can of varnish inside this plastic tub because if it spills, it's very hard to clean up. So if you keep it in this plastic tub and it spills, it'll spill inside the tub and not on the floor or table. What you want to do is take your house brush, you only want to dip a little bit of the bristles into the varnish at once. Don't just shove the brush in there and slop out a big pile of varnish and slap it around. Okay, you want to just dip the brush in, a little bit of the bristles, get a little bit of the bristles wet about this, about this much. And then you're going to paint a very thin coat onto the wood in the same direction as the grain lines. So we're going to go this direction, top to bottom. A thin coat only on the outside of the house. Try not to get the varnish on the inside of the house because it's not good for the birds. So we'll paint one thin coat and try to, try to get all five sides of the house paint, painted. Leave the sixth side dry so it can rest on the table or inside your, your locker. Then put it inside your locker or somewhere safe to dry overnight.
wipe half of the bristles off, and then paint with the same direction as the grain lines. Thin coat. Tomorrow when it's dry, you can apply a second coat of varnish and then you'll be done. First of all, I should have said before you start the varnish, make sure every pencil mark is gone from the outside of your house. So go over it carefully, inspect it, and erase every pencil mark you can find. Because once you varnish on top of that pencil mark, you'll never be able to erase it. The last person to use the, var the varnish brush before you turn it back in must wash it thoroughly. Run the water full blast. Hold the bristles against the bottom of the sink and in the water blast. And spread the bristles out so you can get all that milky white varnish off. Take your time with it. Spread, spread it out. And then when you think you're done, feel the bristles and see if they feel sticky. If it feels sticky, it's not clean. This feels good, good and clean. Okay, and the managers, I'm going to ask the classroom managers to check the brush also to make sure that you got all the varnish off of it. both sides with 80 grit sandpaper. <laughs> Plug your wood burner in and while you're waiting for it to heat up, lightly sketch what you want your sign to say with the pencil. Whoops. The wood burner itself gets hot enough to give you a very nasty, severe third degree burn. So don't touch the metal part of it, only the plastic handle. You'll have to burn in the letters by touching the wood and holding it in place for several seconds. You have to go very slow. This takes a lot of time and patience. Continue this until you have deep, dark brown lines burned in for every letter. The key to making a deep, dark line is the length of time that the wood burner touches the wood. It has, not, it has nothing to do with the pressure or how hard you press, it's simply how long it touches the wood. Next, get some wood glue from the tool station. If it's not there, ask the classroom managers. And put a moderate amount of wood glue on the back of your sign and just glue it on wherever you want it to go. And wood glue is stronger than white glue, so make sure you have the right kind. 